Would you follow me or would you let it be if I leave tonight? We could do this right, we'll find the remedy or would you stay with me now till the morning light? Before you turn away, I just want you to know that I didn't throw your stuff away. Before you make up your mind that I'm nowhere to find I'm standing right here I know that I told you we're over I swear that I'm sober Just listen, I miss you And I know that I said all these things But now when you're with her I can see that That you miss I know I'm kind of popping in now after showing some clips. Um, if I included what I filmed, it was just my skincare and sort of setting up for the night to watch Cruel Summer because that has just taken over my life for the past few days. I was very obsessed on that show and I'll talk more about it in a bit, but it is late. I never really film at night. Um, on like a weekend vlog, I might share dinner and a movie and then just go to bed and not do anything else, but tonight I'm just not tired at all. I think there's some reasoning behind that and I'll explain that in a bit too, but I just thought I'd take you along with me. I don't really know if I'm going to have an all-nighter here, intentional or not, but I just don't feel sleepy at all right now. Uh, so really quickly, I'll talk about Cruel Summer. I understand maybe some people won't find this interesting at all, so I'll try and make it brief, but that show has just really been so interesting to me over the past two days. <laughs> I binged it, but I've loved it. I had to finish it tonight and I just want to chat about it, but obviously I'm not going to talk about anything that could spoil the show because it is kind of a mystery thriller type show. Thriller is pretty loose. I would just say more teen mystery. Um, I think it aired on like Freeform in the US, I want to say, so kind of cheesy, similar to like Pretty Little Liars vibes, but I just think it's a lot more interesting. It was something that was actually recommended to watch um, to me from my older sister. She suggested I watch it when I was recovering from my surgery and I'm actually glad I didn't because it's kind of a non-linear storyline and I think it takes a bit of attention to sort of get what's going on but I really loved that show and it is definitely a recommendation from me. It's been on Amazon Prime somewhat recently. I know it popped up so if you have Prime or however else, I don't know where else um, it will be online for other parts of the world, but definitely a recommendation for me if you like sort of cheesy drama mystery series and it's a quick one. I know it's had some negative reviews, but also some positive ones and I'm singing its praises. I thought it was really good. Now, as for why I'm actually up so late, I guess this is kind of a two-parter. My husband is on night work and he does this on a semi-regular basis for a couple days each month or every couple of months and I always feel like my sleep pattern is affected from that. Sometimes I have a shitty sleep or don't really feel like I can sleep. I'm sure if you're in a long-term relationship and your partner's away for the evening, you kind of get it. I feel like other people will relate or if you live with your family and they're out for the night and you live like you were staying by yourself home alone, I'm sure you'd get it as well. So that's one element, but something kind of huge happened to me yesterday. I know it's after midnight, but I'm just going to say yesterday to make it easy. Um, on Friday the 13th, no less, I got into a car accident. I'm completely fine. I was able to walk away from it, but I did total my car. It was a bit of a shitty situation. And I suppose I'm bringing this up for somewhat of a positive reason, which I'll explain at the end. But um, through a very unfortunate circumstance when I was just driving in my area near where I live, actually, it wasn't far from home, which I think is a very common thing. Obviously, you feel at ease and somewhat complacent when you're driving around your house. I think 
there's some statistics I've always heard where crashes are more likely to happen near your near your house. Um, back on topic, I was driving along home from work on Friday, Friday the 13th, like I said, and just a little bit of traffic at that time of day, kind of peak hour. Everyone's driving along at pace and there was like a ute in front of me that all of a sudden pulled out of the lane because ahead of that ute it saw backed up traffic and didn't notice until the last second so it peeled away and left in another lane and I didn't have time to stop. So obviously I was behind the ute. It's a tricky situation. Yes, it would have been great if I had more room behind me but everyone had the same amount of space and I wasn't able to pull into another lane or veer off because other cars are zipping around. So unfortunately, I ended up rear-ending this car in front of me. Now, I'm okay, the other driver was okay. His car actually wasn't damaged too bad. Mine was completely totaled though. It's a write-off. It's actually pretty shocking what happened to the car and I'm pretty disappointed too. It's just a really unfortunate circumstance. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is a little PSA. I think it's so important to have insurance and obviously just maybe bear this in mind that crazy stuff like this can happen. Um, it was very stressful. I have not been any, in any sort of collision before and I was really freaked out. Be that as it may, I still drove today, like yesterday for being technical. God, I really should have sat down to chat before midnight, but you know what I mean. After the crash, I was able to still drive Brendan's car. Thank goodness we have two cars because I actually worked on the Saturday, yesterday, today. I'm getting muddled, but I have already been back behind the wheel in another car and as tough as it was, I was able to do that. But I'm in the market for a new car, so I'm gonna have to find one. And yeah, it, it definitely could have been worse. And I think the reason why I bring it up is just to say, if you don't have insurance, look into it and yeah, just be really careful at any time because even if you're paying the most attention, other cars might not be and can kind of inadvertently put you in a situation where smash ups happen. It's a tricky one as well. And again, I'm just gonna wrap this up soon, but there was a police car nearby at another incident and he had dash cam footage, he saw the whole thing and even the car in front of me that I did rear end said to me, he said, oh I thought it was going to get hit by the ute and they pulled away at the last minute and then I saw your car, there's nothing you could have done. I think that gave me a bit of peace of mind as shitty as I felt and shaken up um, for the sheer fact that the person, the other person's car who was stationary and got damaged said that it wasn't my fault, did make me feel a little bit better. Um, if I haven't done so already, I might just put a picture of the car on screen. I don't know if that's like way out of place, but just to show the severity of what happened, um, it might freak some people out. So skip ahead to the time on screen if you don't want to see a car smashed up. Maybe some people will find it interesting, but I was fine. My neck definitely hurt after and I think it might have been stress related still kind of hurts and it was hurting when I was driving today but I think that's more stress than anything. Um, now I'm done talking here, the picture is gone. But I think just due to all of that, even though I was fine to drive, I just can't sleep. I feel stressed, obviously it's kind of a, a big deal even though I was able to walk away from it and I'm trying to make light, not make light of the situation but look on the bright side. It is a big deal and I just don't feel like I can sleep so I'm just gonna try and be productive I think obviously I'm vlogging to share my thoughts and what I get up to and all of that and there's some things I can do this evening until the morning just to keep myself busy maybe tire myself out if I can get any sleep we will see I have a little to-do list in my phone um, if anything I wish I'd made a list of stuff to watch now that I'm done cruel summer but I'm sure I'll find something or just watch YouTube. But I am considering doing my regrowth again of my hair. I don't know how, how much you can sort of see because it's pulled back. I'll have to check to see how uh, oily my hair is. 
my hair never gets oily because I'm on Accutane, but how much I think it could withstand the bleach. And of course, whenever I do my roots, I do put in, um, you know, moisturizing sort of things like castor oil. So we'll see about that. I'll check my hair in a sec, but I've got a bit of tidying around the house. I have a bit of meal prep to do, and I think I've got to put together a grocery list and I'll try and do an online order since I think my weekend's going to be a little bit busy and I'm not sure when I'll be able to get to the shops and we need some food. Uh, basically, now where I'm at, I'm about to have a weekend and it's a little bit of a long weekend for me. I have plans to see my family, just my sister and my mum tomorrow, and I think we're just going out for lunch. I've got a few tasks around the house, but also a follow-up appointment with my surgeon, my six-week follow-up from my surgeon. So yeah, a little bit going on, and I think it will just help if I get a few things started this evening. Since I already can't sleep, I may as well be productive. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to fill up my bottle since I'm running low on water, but I'm just going to get out of this room and away from these bright lights, and I think check my hair just to see if it's in a state where I'll be able to do the roots. Okay, you can probably see here, that's a fair bit of regrowth. I think my hair feels in a state where I haven't washed it in a while and there's no real product in um, like hairspray or anything. So I think it's probably a good time to do my regrowth. Maybe I'll put on some YouTube videos and do the roots. I'm sure I've shown many a times in vlogs and videos here and there how I do my roots myself, but um, I'll put in a little bit here and there as I do it so it's not too boring and I guess the next time I'm talking to you I should have a full head of platinum blonde hair again and not this grown out I don't want to say mess because obviously hair can get a lot more grown out than this but this is as long as I like to leave it since I do it at home and I don't want to end up with rings from doing it too long and having parts that underdevelop so I'm gonna get started all right, so I'm 15 minutes in. I've actually been able to do all of the top section already. Uh, obviously my roots have the bleach peroxide mix and the lengths, I just use castor oil. I put it in just to keep everything moisturized while the rest processes. But all the top section's done already. And I just do that with my brush. And I can just paint, you're sitting on the shelf, the mirror beside you there, I can look in and just paint the top. Kind of self-explanatory. And then for the back of my head, I catch my reflection, Ooh, hi, and do the rest. So I'll be going through sectioning and clipping everything up from here and continuing with the process. I just thought I'd check in. Um, the top is obviously always very easy because it's pretty clear to see. The back section and uh, sides typically takes a bit longer. So I don't know how long it'll go from here, but I am hopeful I can just push through. I don't think I'll check in again until I'm done, just to show you how it looks. All right, take in this look, if you dare. All the hair is piled up on top of my head. I've got the bleach processing, and of course, like I said, the rest of it has its castor oil in. So. While I just let the back continue to do its thing, um, I don't know if I've explained as well, I always use a lower vol at the start, like volume peroxide, and then higher at the end. I'm not a hairdresser, it just works for me when I do it at home. But while my hair is lightening up, I think what I'm gonna do is work my grocery list and see if I can put in an online order as well. I think my hair's done processing. I'm just gonna take it out, give it a good wash, a good condition, and I'm kind of excited to get my contacts out as well since obviously I've been wearing them for a long time, so it's just gonna be so comfortable after. All right, now I normally clean on my weekends, but I figured since I'm up, I would start some laundry. I've just got all my towels in at the moment, and I thought I'd mention as well, I don't know if I've really said before, but in terms of cruelty-free cleaning products, I really like the Earth Choice. I mean, I think there's like two brands that I always see in the supermarket, but this has 
pretty much everything. It's just cruelty free and like made in Australia. Obviously not sponsored because I'm a nobody, but uh, I like a lot of this stuff. I use a lot of this stuff. It's like all my cleaning products basically. So um, I'm just gonna put on the laundry. I'm one of those people that does like using fabric softener as well, just to make sure the towels are nice and soft because otherwise I do find, I think since using liquid detergent for some reason, um, sometimes the towels get kind of dry and rough, but obviously using fabric softener, it avoids that. So I'm just gonna pop some of that in. It's still really weird to use a front loader for me since I've had a top loader forever. But, oh well, <laughs> live and learn. Uh, so it's all set up. Mm. I do like this laundry cupboard. Um, never had anything like this inside. Normally we just keep all of our laundry in the garage in previous houses, but obviously when I don't want to hear that noise or see it going, I will just close it up and it will dull it out a little bit. All right, I am done with my hair. It's looking a lot lighter now. I feel like because it's nighttime and the low light, maybe I'm not focusing so well, but yeah. All blonde again. I feel like my hair is feeling pretty good as well, despite the fact I've just done my roots. Uh, obviously, it is a drying sort of drying sort of process, but I think what helps me along is definitely the castor oil that I use, as well as um, Olaplex. I'm a big fan of that. I use pretty much all of their products. I think. Um, Recently or a couple months ago, I got the shampoo and conditioner really like that I was a bit skeptical at first, but I think it does feel a lot nicer than any other shampoo and conditioner. I've tried plus um, I mean, I've been using the oil and leave-in cream forever In fact, I'll probably put this in as well as the oil in a little bit But I don't really like doing that when my hair is too wet. So I'll just let it air dry a little bit more but another product I used tonight was new to me I don't know how new it is to Sephora Australia, but I saw it recently for the first time. The mask, I used that and I do notice my hair seems a lot more, I guess, soft and I mean, obviously it's still wet, but it just feels a little bit more moisturized than it normally would be after bleaching. I feel it, especially at the scalp. Um, even with every sort of intervention I'd make, I would notice in the past that my hair just felt a little bit dry. But this time I think because of the mask, I mean, it could be other factors as well. A combination of everything I think is part of it, but I think the mask actually did a good job. So pretty happy I picked this up. I don't know if I use it every time, but certainly it might be a good thing to have in my arsenal for nights where I do, or days for that matter, where I do my regrowth. So uh, yes, the Olaplex, it's kind of expensive, but I think it does a good job, especially since I obviously have the bleached hair. It's obviously more prone to damage, so using products like that really help. I think as well, maybe people who heat style their hair a lot would notice more of a difference. Not sure about the average sort of hair. If you don't do too much color or heat, maybe you wouldn't notice much of a difference, but I'd say for what is typically pretty dry hair, I notice good difference. So very happy with that. I thought I'd share that little tidbit, but for now, I'm basically going to let my hair air dry. I had it up in the towel before, of course, but I'll just leave it out now and let it do its thing while I get onto other tasks around the house for a little bit because I still don't feel tired. Uh, what time is it? Okay. Um, I still don't feel tired and I think as well, I feel a lot more comfortable without the contacts too. My eyes were feeling dry and I thought I was getting tired, but no. They were just dry so i'm gonna have to find some stuff to keep me busy otherwise i'll just sit around and probably waste my time on sims it's probably more worthwhile me getting stuff done when it's kind of the quiet hours of the evening and i can't sleep so i think that's my point i'm just gonna keep trying to be productive 
I'm just tidying up stuff in my room, sort of like my makeup clothing storage room. Anyway, I thought I'd mention not only the car accident, I've been incredible amounts of pain from the IUD, but today I brought my boots with me, like I never drive in shoes, but I brought boots to wear to work um, yesterday, I suppose I should say now, and I literally brought two white boots that were completely mismatched. I don't know if you can see this, I've got a midi and a knee high I just grabbed and I remember being so annoyed with myself when I was in the car um, to put my shoes on, but I ended up buying new ones. They're kind of um, almost like a scuba suit material I want to say. It's really hard to describe, but I ended up getting these just because I needed shoes to wear to work and I actually really like them. They're only from Famous Footwear. I think they were like 60 bucks, but it got me out of a sticky spot. They look kind of weird not on the feet, but I needed new work boots anyway, new black ones, so that worked out pretty well. Um, I just thought it was funny, so I'd say what happened, uh, quite frustrating. I have a bit of a boot obsession, but yeah, I grabbed two mismatched ones. It was so annoying. I'm just glad it all worked out in the end. Right, I'm just going to take a few minutes to blast my hair with a hairdryer just so it doesn't dry funny. I've got my air wrap and I actually really like this hairdryer element. I've got, I mean, a hairdryer that I've had for like 10 years that I, I actually feel doesn't work as good as this. I feel like it smooths everything out and then I'll probably finish with this. I'm not sure what to call it. There's a round um, thin brush, but this is just like the flat paddle brush maybe. I don't know. I like it for putting a bit of a sort of flick at the end. I'll see how I go with that, but it's just nice to sort of brush through. Uh, just because I don't want any kinks or waves, but basically when it was drying, or as it was coming to the end of drying, I put in a little bit of Olaplex oil, and I think that should be okay. So we'll see we, how we go from here. Um, certainly there have been times in the past where I haven't done any heat treatment right after doing any sort of bleaching, regrowth, but this time my hair feels really comfortable, so I think it should be fine. I do, however, need to get set up with something to listen to, <laughs> so I'm just going to do that. My hair is dry. I have put in a little bit of leave-in treatment and tied it up just to keep it out of the way. I still have a bit of energy left and one thing I've been thinking about doing for the past couple days is making some brownies. I've got all the ingredients and everything. I normally like doing a pretty big batch and both myself and Bren will eat some in the first few days and kind of just freezing the rest. That way they're always ready to grab when we want some and we don't have any in the freezer at the minute. So I think I'm gonna do that. This is the recipe I use, literally handwritten. Um, and this is from ages ago. I mean, it's still got things like eggs in there. I do the same thing, obviously, just with egg substitute, obviously things like vegan butter and, I was gonna say milk, but there's no milk in this, um, <laughs> vegan chocolate chips. So I think if anything, I might actually need to rewrite all of my little handwritten recipes on proper cards. I've got like a nice, recipe box. Let's see if I can find it. This thing here, I feel like it's so pretty, but I haven't got anything in there. So one day, not today, because it's going to take me a while. One day I'll rewrite everything. But for now, I'm just going to go off this. And sometimes I don't always follow my recipes to a T or any recipes really. Uh, sometimes I just kind of go off road and add different ingredients sometimes depending on how I'm feeling, substitutions or a bit more of this, a bit more of that if I want something different. I think I want to make slightly more fudgy brownies than normal and what I normally do when I do that is add another ingredient, olive oil. I'll see how I feel. I'm just going to get started making them and I think when they're in the oven, what I'm going to do is just a little bit of meal prep as well.
All right, while the brownies are cooking away, I am going to clean up everything from making them as well as sort out my fridge. So what I have here, um, there's a lot of food, a lot of stuff going on, but this has been here for two days, just some leftover Japanese tofu curry. I think I need to add a little bit more tofu to it and portion it up and set it aside to go in the freezer just so it doesn't go bad and it'll make a good meal later on, just on a day where I don't feel like cooking or because Brennan eats six meals a day, he normally grabs a meal out of the freezer. So that's gonna work out nicely while I wait for the brownies to bake. All right, brownies are done cooking. I've just got them cooling on a rack beside me. I turned them out right away onto this cooling rack just because they are very, I don't wanna say undercooked, but I really didn't cook them for as long as Technically, I would have because I wanted them really soft and fudgy, and I think I've been able to achieve that. So I thought it was best just to take them out of their parchment paper and set them up so they can start to cool. I will leave it like this and put it in the fridge, probably on a cutting board, and slice it up in the morning, I think, or a couple hours from now at least. I think it's just easier to slice them and portion them up when they're not hot because I don't want it sort of tearing and falling apart, it will firm up a little bit in the fridge, and that's what I want. You might think I'm crazy because I'm not going to have a slice now, but genuinely, I don't really feel like a brownie right this minute. I did have a little bit of a taste test because they're so soft, there was some just sort of stuck to the parchment paper, and I was able to try that, and it is spot on. Can't wait to have a piece later, probably with some dairy-free ice cream. I don't think I have any dollop cream in the house since it's really hard to find at the minute. There was a brand that I really liked, Loco. They did a whole bunch of dairy-free creams and I haven't been able to find them for a bit. But the brownies themselves, I'm super happy with and I'll just serve it with ice cream, I guess. But while they're cooling and while they were cooking, I obviously cleaned up. The island is now tidy and I've also portioned up the Japanese curry as well. So. I've just got five meals here, a little bit of rice, a little bit of curry, and I'll probably put them in the fridge inside for now and later on transfer them all to the freezer so that they can stay in there, ready to grab whenever either myself or Brendan needs them. All right, it looks like the sun is coming up. Now that it's bright or getting there, I think it'll be a good time to take the dogs on a nice long run. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better. So much better. Mm -hmm. I don't fit to your bars. Beauty queens with final blows. You can do better. I dare you to be wilder. my walk and just having a big cup of tea to warm up I had to get into my dressing gown again as well because I'm so cold I don't know why I was kind of warm ish overnight but I'm freezing today anyway while I have my tea I'm just gonna think about what I want to get done today probably gonna be more relaxing than anything but I'll see how I go maybe I'll have a nap or perhaps I'll just wait until night time and have a really good sleep I think because of not getting any sleep hopefully i'll be able to sleep really well tonight anyway now that it's the morning i am going to be wrapping up this video here before i go i just wanted to thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you haven't already but like i said i'll be leaving you here and hopefully i'll see you next time bye